Some time ago I put a poll on which I asked uh, the audience what kind of videos they want from me to make. So the video Spider-Man No Way Home movie analysis won. Even so there are some people who actually voted for something else. They didn't put even a comment on exactly what. So I don't know what exactly do you want me. Anyway, in today's video we are going to discuss was uh, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home actually a good movie and what that exactly mean for the phase 4 of the Marvel. Spider-Man, I love that people are having a collective escapist mm -hmm. experience in mass. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's that's fun. It's fun to be a part of that that joy for people. Be careful what you wish for, Parker. If I were a rich man, all day long I'd... You see, since the Infinity War, I didn't have a positive opinion about Marvel Cinematic Universe because the movies they're making in the last years were actually pretty bad, I must say. I didn't see any kind of good story in them. And also political You've message. gotta do better, Senator. You've gotta step up. I mean, it was really dumb. And I totally lost hope for the Marvel Phase 4 because I don't see any potential in those empty shallow stories that literally go nowhere and there are simply nothing more. So I will start wondering why exactly those stories go nowhere. Well, you see, the problem is the screenplay want to be modern, hippie, want to have story reliable to the modern theme. And that way they lose the originality, because you see, a good story must be construed over a long period of time. And if you want to jump on any hype train that is in current year popular, you will at some point have to reject everything good about your uh, previously ideas for screenplay and that way you are going to lose a lot on the uh, creation potential of the movie. Also not to mention this movie many people will criticize how it was actually just a nostalgic bait because of all old villains that show up in this movie but I am against that idea. You see if this was a pure fan service in that case those characters from the past will be just a uh, full of shells of themselves. They will literally be there for the sake of being there, for the nostalgia. But in this movie, every one of them is his own unique character. He develops his characteristic in a little screen time he have in a great way, I must say. Because first time in a long period, we actually saw a real consequences for something that is done in the movie. For instance, spellings and magics are dangerous tools of the powerful creatures and it should not be used just like that. And that was the great point, you know, in the settling of the movie was the greatest message of the Spider-Man movies. With great power come the great responsibility. So with great power you must uh, do uh, carefully. I mean, Let's look at the real-life leaders. We know if they are left unchecked, usually they will turn themselves into a dangerous dictators. This is the basically the same principle and that is kind of what I like. Of course, I hate the idea of too much realism in the superhero movies, because after all, if you are make super movie too much realistic or a comedy spin-off, because you see, I noticed that uh, Marvel movies in the past have this tendency to make movie too much funny for its, its own sake. Then you cannot take anything serious that happened in the... And this is the kind of big problem for me when I'm talking about the modern Spider-Man. Because Tom Holland's Spider-Man actually uh, didn't have the struggle of previous version. Because he has the Tony Stark basically who would solve any of his problems and not to mention when you have a billionaire on the, your side and you don't see the consequences of your action in everyday life it's 
not actually a problematic because we know uh, for the fact that Tobey Maguire Spider-Man in the past for every of his action he would suffer from the consequences in the and that is exactly a reason why I consider the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man in same Raimi version actually the best of the Spider-Man and this is the reason why I actually called the new Tom Holland Spider-Man for the long period of time uh, Iron Man Jr. because he was actually an interesting character to me and also I was never worried about anything that happened in that universe because I know he's surrounded by a lot of powerful heroes who could jump in any moment and actually help him with any kind of situation. He also have a super high uh, powerful organization like SHIELD but in this movie of course uh, of, I want to say spoiler alert but if you didn't uh, watch this movie at this point you can't blame me go watch it and then return for this movie analysis also I would like to put some uh, quotes from one of my favorite youtubers for movie analysis and his personal opinions about this Spider-Man franchise CU films, which is ideal because Raimi came closest to understanding the character and his place in the worlds. And there's no way I could do this review without talking about the other two Spider-Men. Because let's be honest, the prospect of seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield reprise their roles again was pretty much the main selling point of this movie for most people. And I'm happy to say they absolutely hit a home run with this one, giving them both smart, sensitive and respectful character arcs that don't just stay consistent with who they were before, they actually build on it in a logical and satisfying way. Tobey Maguire was always going to be THE Spider-Man for me, so I'm not ashamed to say that he was the one I was most excited to see again. And damn, considering he hasn't played the character in nearly 15 years, he's barely missed a beat. Yeah, he's older now and he's a bit rusty at first, but he fits comfortably into the role of a more mature and experienced Peter who's very much been there and done that without losing sight of who he really is. And when it's time to put on the suit again, he's still more than capable of kicking ass. Damn, imagine a hero who's older but still capable optimistic and true to himself <laughs> what he say is actually a fact those things are rare in modern time movies this is why uh, the spider-man no way home was kind of refreshment because it didn't try to force a politics it was actually a fun experience to watch in the cinema not to mention that in one moment Matt Murdock show up which was big surprise for me also, not to mention the old character who performed villains before, seeing them perform again was epic just in itself. Basically, it was the Sinister Six, but in the movie, which I never thought that we are going to see. Not to mention that there was indeed a tragic moment in Peter's life, and also not to mention that hype was real. <laughs> chemistry between three Peter Parker was something unique and I love it when they start doing uh, except uh, all those action scenes we have this scene where they are in lab doing their scientific stuff and now we have opportunity to see their intelligence and also uh, for Andrew Garfield Spider-Man opportunity for redemption this is how you show emotion not this that whatever was in captain marvel and disaster that movie was anyway i must say this movie was actually awesome if marvel start making the phase four like this then there is bright future for them